Hello, my name is Curtis DeGoyer. I work at Borgo here as the Borgo Agronomy Team Lead. And the purpose of this video is to give a very brief overview of our 2020 wheat results. If you wanted more information, you can find it uh, on links below, or you'll see it maybe scrolling across me up in your top right hand corner there, where you'll be able to download each, each trial. So this is gonna be very brief, just to give an overview of, of what we did this year. So we had seven different trials on the go, uh, nitrogen placement, sideband versus mid row, sideband versus seed row when it came to phosphorus, uh, high phosphorus rate, 35P or 70P in the seed row, potash placement, uh, we were playing around with seed row and mid row band and whether or not posh, uh, potash had a effect on yield, uh, row spacing, 10 and 12 inch, granular copper trial, we were playing around with some rough and tough copper, and as well as a, a PGR trial. So we're using manipulator uh, with three different rates of nitrogen. So we're seated on May 13th in 2020. We're using Landmark at 150 pounds an acre. So for about 40 seeds a square foot, uh, 140 pounds of N, of actual N, 35P, 15K, and five pounds of granular copper, except for where we did the trial. Uh, there was elemental sulfur applied two falls previous. So we were expecting a little, a little bit of sulfur release from that. So here's the results from our nitrogen placement trial. Uh, we have plant stands in blue, yield in red, and protein in the, in the green. So what we found overall in this trial was that phosphorus, addition of phosphorus into, our, into the treatment made a difference in yield. And you can see that from on the mid row band where we didn't have phos and we did add it, as well as on the side band where we didn't have phos and we did add it. Uh, but overall, what we found was that there is a reduction in yield when we had nitrogen in the, in the side band uh, versus in the mid row band. So this was tested with the exact same drill. We just locked up the banders. So visually you can see these are, our, these are our strips out in the field. They're 400 feet long by 30 feet wide. So nitrogen in the mid row, uh, no P or K. You can tell that it was lagging behind a bit uh, when it came to plant development versus PK in the side band uh, with nitrogen in the mid row. So the addition of, of phosphorus obviously made a, a, a difference. We had nitrogen in the sideband though, uh, no P or K. Uh, there was a difference when we added the PK in the sideband with all that nitrogen, but uh, it wasn't nearly as, as pronounced as when the nitrogen was in the, in the mid row. So again, you'll probably see something scroll across me here with information. You can click on the PDF to go to that, go to the trials, or you can find them uh, below, uh, below the video here. So our next trial that we had was our phosphorus placement. So using the same setup where we had that same uh, dual knife opener with mid row banders and we either would lock the banders up, put nitrogen in the side band, or we would put the banders down and put nitrogen in the mid row. Uh, what we wanted to look at in this one though is when we did that, uh, we had shown you no phos and phos in the side band. Well, now we're gonna add some phosphorus in the seed row and compare. And what we found was there's no difference between seed row and sideband when nitrogen was in the mid row. There's no difference in where we placed that, uh, that phosphorus and, and potash. When it came to the sideband, however, uh, there's no difference in yield, no significant difference in yield when we placed some phosphorus in the seed row. But what was really interesting to see though, was when nitrogen was in the sideband, no PK, and then PK in the sideband, and PK in the seed row, was just how much further ahead that, that crop development was. Uh, with, with early access to phosphorus. So in this scenario, when we're having all that nitrogen in, nitrogen in the sideband and we add phosphorus and, and potash in there, which is not mobile, it just, the wheat just can't uptake that PK early. It has to wait for that nitrogen to uh, kind of disband and move away so roots can go and, and get it versus when we just have it in the seed row, it, it, it can be taken up. Uh, again, when it came to nitrogen in the mid row, uh, it doesn't matter if it's in the, in the seed row or in the side band there, but that's these two strips here. Uh, uptake was, uh, was the same, or at least the plant development was the same. High phosphorus, we wanted to see if we added in double the amount of phosphorus into a trial. So this is on 10 inch space drill. Uh, we had 35P or 70P and we had no difference in yield uh, when we did this. So uh, phosphorus wasn't our limiting factor. All we ended up doing when we did this was in that three quarter inch opener, we dropped our plant stand down uh, of four plants. So it was a significant uh, reduction, but there's no benefit to, to adding that extra phosphorus into the scenario. 
And we can see that there's no maturity differences either when 35P or 70P versus the no P. There's, a, there's obviously an effect with phosphorus, but it didn't matter the rate in this particular year. Uh, potash placement we saw in last year was uh, I'd put potash, this is 2019, so I'd put potash in the seed row when I was seeding a field. So that's on this side. And then I switched it over into the mid row. And we saw that in wheat, there's a huge line, there's a huge difference here, especially on the hilltop. Uh, really dry conditions, not a lot of, of potassium mineralization going on. Uh, canola swaths in 2018 really showed up where uh, potassium was actually leached through the swath and into the ground. And so it, it looked like, you know, in those strips there, there was, there was no deficiency. And then obviously you can see deficiencies between, between the rows. And so we had a, we had a uh, tissue test done and showed that it was a potassium deficiency. So we wanted to see what kind of yield difference we we're looking at. So we put it into 2020 and we found that there is no uh, potash response this year. We had really good seeding conditions, good moisture, more mineralization of potash, not as much uh, moisture being lost and the, and the need for, for potassium was a little lower in the plant potentially. Um, so it was a kind of a double whammy where we had no effect of, of potash uh, fertilizer at all. And we tried putting in the seed row on its own or in the mid row with phos. All we could see was that there was a phosphorus response, but no, no potash response. And we can see that visually as well, 0K and P, and then we added FOS in. You can see that deeper green there. And then we added in K, but took out uh, the phosphorus. And it looks like we had not added any in at all. So it uh, didn't matter if it was in the seed row or in the mid row either. So yeah, again, check out the results there below. Uh, some row spacing is always a good one, 10 versus 12 inch. Uh, last year, we had seen a significant difference uh, in better yield of 10 inch over 12 this year, not so much, uh, no significant difference, maybe a slight, slight um, yield difference, but not significant. What we did see this year, though, was a reduction, a significant reduction in plants down when we went to 12 inch over 10 inch, more than likely just due to inter-row competition. You have 20% more going down each row on 12 inch versus the 10. So then when we look at the pictures though, again, you can see on 10 inch, there's a big response to adding PK into it. Um, on 12 inch, the same thing. I uh, really can't see any differences between the, between the two though at, at this time. This granular copper trial, so we had put it, put it in all of our trials, except for obviously there's three strips, three replicated strips where we didn't put any in. And we didn't see a significant difference uh, in this. There's no letters on this graph not showing any significant differences at all, just because there wasn't any showing up. Uh, maybe a slight reduction in, in yield, uh, but nothing of an, nothing that we could say was definitively uh, due to the granular copper. So this was rough and tough copper. Uh, it was just a granule went down through our saddle tank into the seed row, applied really nice, but uh, not a huge, huge effect. We'll, we'll continue this into the future here. Again, no difference when you look at it visually. No copper, copper. It uh, never really showed up all year. Uh, this is a really interesting one, a PGR trial. So plant growth regulator, we had manipulator applied at the, oh, about the five to six leaf. So it was in its own application. Uh, we had three different rates, 140, 170, and 200 pounds of N. We kept FOSS and K the same because we wanted to just isolate one factor with that being nitrogen. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe we'll change it up for next year. But what we did see was no difference in nitrogen rates as far as yield went, but there's always a significant yield bump when we, when we applied PGR. Uh, really interesting to see our, our plant stands didn't change. Our protein, when we did apply PGR, yield went up, protein went down and, and comparatively. And that was in all three different uh, nitrogen rates. Now, of course, when we put on 200 pounds of N, we had a little bit more protein than when we only put down only uh, 140 pounds of N. So there was, uh, there's that factor in there. We were trying to see if we can get high yields and high protein, which we did achieve. I mean, that was a pretty good for a uh, for hard red spring wheat here. When it came to the, to the look of it, uh, the PGR did what it was supposed to do. The plants, the crops stood much better. Here we, I just seeded right across at a certain end rate, came back another rate, um, did not treat this PGR, this we did treat with a PGR. And you can tell that this is 
you know, there's some lodging areas a little bit, not actually not terrible for what, uh, for how much end was put down, but this where we did apply the PGR on the right hand side here was, was standing perfectly straight. There was zero lodging at all. And we looked at the height of it, you know, around 33 to 34 inches on the noble PGR. So fairly short uh, anyway, but when we did apply it 27, 28 inches, uh, so about that six inch difference and uh, it made a difference as far as no lodging at all. So again, if you want to see the results a little bit more in depth than that, but that was a quick overview of what we did, go to our website, borgo.com, click on the agronomy tab. You'll see our results from this year and from previous years as well. Uh, we also have our canola ones from this year on there and you'll see another link to a video for that. So again, this is just uh, to get you familiar with what we did, but please, by all means, if you have any questions, please contact myself, uh, Curtis DeGoyer here at, at Borgo. Uh, you can call the office, ask for me, or there's my email address. You can find me on Twitter. Uh, we also have Jeff Strukoff here, another great agronomist, uh, or maybe he's the best agronomist. Uh, contact him uh, through the Borgo office or on, on email or look up his Twitter handle there. So I'll say more about that. So again, thank you for paying attention and uh, yeah, please, Download those PDFs if you have any questions. Uh, feel free to contact me or Jeff. Thank you.